here to visit with you about praying for strangers uh, and adventure of the human spirit, which is the book I never meant to write. I am a novelist and I love story. Uh, I'm southern, pretty much a southern mystical novelist, if you will. Some people call it Southern Gothic. There's a touch of magical realism. I think they're just wonderful stories and a great landscape, but I'd love to lose myself in story. I had the strangest resolution uh, I've ever heard of, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about. Whoops, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this book came about, and then I'm going to take plenty of times for question and answers because as, as I've been traveling, that seems to be uh, a lot of people have questions, and we just rather have conversation. So we, we're just going to do more of that, if that's okay with you. And then I'll talk about anything that you want me to. So, um, you know, about the dog, or my cat, or tell me stories about my husband, or the adorables, my grandchildren. That's one of my favorite subjects. So I have two little girls, and they're nine and four. I call them the adorables, and they refer to me as Zaza, which is the baby sort of call me Zaza when she was little, the, baby, you know, the southern term, the baby. The, uh, the oldest granddaughter started calling me Zaza when she was a baby, and I, I think that's one of the greatest grandma names ever, and, and so you're welcome to use it if you like, if you're waiting on grandchildren, I don't know what they should call it. But this has been a really different experience. The book was uh, on, on sale last Tuesday, was the first day. Wednesday was the kickoff in Nashville, we had a, a, just a lovely event. Have been on the road with it, and it is different to get up and talk about something that is so personal and so true and so to the bone. And then I had to figure out, well, if I read something, what am I going to read without crying? And um, because it really was a moment that both my sons were in the military. One son had been deployed previously to Iraq. But this caught me at the very end of 2008 with both sons with orders to deploy, one to Iraq and one to Afghanistan, basically the first week of 2009. And looking back on it, I realized I was just a crazy mama. I kept saying things like, is it there a rule against this? I've seen Saved Private Ryan, I think there's a rule against this. And they kept going, no, mom, there's no such rule, you know, there's nothing, you know, you know this is the way it is. And we were trying to get together, uh, to get the family together for the first time we'd ever done this for a family gathering in the Blue Ridge Mountains so that we could all be with the boys, you know, uh, before they were deployed. So we had family coming out from North Florida and coming from other areas. And as I was packing for that, um, for it to leave, I had this just one line that ran through my head, and it was New Year's resolution, pray for a stranger every day. And I thought, well, oh, that's an interesting idea, an interesting concept, but I'm not doing it. I'm praying for my boys. I'm not going to really focus on much beyond my own world in the coming year. We packed for the trip and left. And then I had, on December 31st, you know, life, life has weird things that happen. I had a meeting with this, not a meeting, but an occurrence where I bumped into this little boy who obviously was in trouble, and the only thing I ever saw were his blue shoes. And I knew that I was going to call the authorities and say, you've got to intervene in this situation. And before I could do anything, the boy disappeared, and I went through this entire little ski resort looking for those blue shoes. And that night, in that, in that lodge where we were staying, I told my husband, there's just nothing I can do. And, and my heart was so heavy, and I realized, there's nothing I can do but say a prayer for that little boy and hope that my prayer makes a difference in his life. Somehow, some way to believe in that. I do believe in prayer. I don't talk about it much, but it looks like I'm going to be talking about it quite a bit in the coming year. So uh, my husband said, well, it looks like you have found your stranger for the day. And because he, I had told him about this idea for this resolution. And I said, I'm not even sure I'm doing that. And it's not even the first of the year. And then I realized as the ball was falling and we were watching it on TV right there at midnight when I was thinking about it, I thought, okay, fine. I'll do this for one year that I will accept this resolution and I'll embrace it. Because at that moment I realized this could have an impact to make a difference. And so I went forward in the first of the year and I would see someone, I remember, the, I remember January 1st, 2009, was the housekeeper in the hotel that was so kind to my mother. 
and, and I thought, I want to say a special prayer for her tonight before I fall asleep. So I ventured into the new year seeing these faces, and I never intended to tell a single soul, this is what I do, or that you're my person. That just, that wasn't a part of my picture in my head. I was raised in Episcopalian, we're rather quiet about things, you know, we kind of keep it to ourselves, we like sacred spaces, chanting some candles, and it all means something for people that say, oh. And, and I also have spent years attending non-denominational churches and been a member of them, and my parents, or my grandparents were Baptists, so, you know, I'm comfortable, you know, I'm comfortable in, in various venues and settings of faith. But that's just my background, and so I'm, I'm rather um, quiet, less than, you know, in some ways. However, my mother-in-law was staying with this house, I think, for this holiday event, and I went up to a lady in the bus, bus station. She wanted to ride the bus home to Panama City. And I saw this woman, and I felt so compelled that I just needed to tell her about my resolution. And I told my husband, if you'll wait one second, and I went back, and I kind of hemmed and hawed a little bit, you know, at the counter, and the lady was buying a ticket. And then I, I approached her and I decided, okay, I was going to whisper because I didn't want the lady behind the counter to hear me. And I said, okay, I'll do this thing. If you don't mind me asking the name, I have a New Year's resolution every day. I pray for a stranger before I fall asleep. And I just want you to know, today you're my person, and I'll be saying special prayers for you. Okay, I'm not going to try to do her beautiful Kentucky accent. She steps back and looks at me, and she says, Honey, do you know I was just asking God this morning, is there anybody in this whole world praying for me? And I'm standing there looking at her, and she's standing there looking at me in this moment of wonder and this incredible connection. And I said, Well, it looks like I am. And then I gave her a hug, and she had tears in her eyes, and I said, You have a good job, honey. Kentucky, and she said, oh, I will now, honey, I will now. So amazingly, she was a, I, mean, I guess I was the answer to that prayer, but she was also a door to me that showed me, okay, one, that's a divine setup if I've ever seen one. The first person you ever say that to tells you they've been praying and asking God, does anybody, anybody at home are praying for me? It's like, come on. And uh, I love this lady that has this radio show. It's an ABC affiliate in the Atlanta area. And her first name is Barbara. And I loved our interview. I've been doing a lot of NPR interviews this, this past week from around the country, you know, by, by phone or in studios. And she go, come on, River. And I go, no, really. And she go, come on, River, really. You know, and I just loved her enthusiasm about the story and, and, and the casualness of being able to say exactly that. Come on, River, really? And I'm like, really? That's exactly what happened? Because that's exactly what my husband said when I got back in the car and said, you are not going to believe what just happened in the bus in the bus station. And he goes, come on, that's what she said? And I said, that's exactly what she said. And he said, you better write that down. And he began to, as I, I stepped forward, and I would begin to tell people the same exact thing. I have this resolution today of my stranger. I just want you to know I'll be praying blessings for your life tonight before I go to sleep and I'll be thinking about you. I won't forget you. Over and over, the reactions of people I told that to were like, come on, River, you've got to be kidding. But the world must be thirsty for prayer and a stranger's touch like we have never, ever believed before because my experience and I, I meant to stop doing this at the end of the year, December 31st, 2009. I'm like, I'm done. I've checked that box. I'm out of here. And then a few days into the new year, I started looking around at people, and I started considering my experiences in the past year and the stories of the people I met. And I thought, oh, no, I'm not done with this, and I will probably never be done with this. And so I've been uh, praying for strangers ever since. I've been telling strangers 50% of the time, maybe 70% of the time actually, and I continue to get responses that are everything from a busy cashier's relief smile and her whispered, oh, thank you, I needed that, to people breaking down in tears um, and going straight from, thank you for shopping at you know XYZ store, have a great day, have me slowing down long enough to say, honey, I do this thing, and I just want you to know today you're my person, I'll be saying prayers for you. And the little girl breaking down in tears. Um, and me saying, okay, 
would you like to step outside for a minute? And I'm always rushing. I, I seem to have a to-do list just out of the universe. Don't we all? I mean, we all have these ridiculous to-do lists now. You know, whatever happened to life, <laughs> you know? And somehow we, we have so much to do that we really are concentrating on our bubble that we live in, and we don't have time for anybody else. And now I've been forced to take time, <laughs> take time for strangers that I don't even know. And I step outside the store and the little girl, the little girl, you know, at my age, everybody's a little girl. Uh, but she tells me about her dad being ill and she's the one taking care of him and how she hasn't been able to see her friends and she's lonely and other people are not coming around. And um, that she hadn't been able to go to church and she really missed church, but also that the church, her church family people were not coming around and so she was, she was having a difficult Time. And after we talked for a minute, though, she was visibly lightened by the fact that for some reason she had been my stranger that day.